31, welcome to example nine. So I'm gonna get a little bit funkier with our equations and see how we can do with this. Now, if I look at this, I see logs in here and I have a logarithmic equation, but I wanna take note that I have logarithms on both sides of the equation, right? So I have some LNs here, an LN here, and an LN here. So right now I've got logarithms on both sides of the equation. I want to solve this thing and give exact values, so I'm going to try and not use my calculator as I go through this. But my game plan is to get a single logarithm on each side of the equation and then set the arguments equal to each other. And so I'm good to go on the right side. I do have a single logarithm. But on the left side, I do not have a single logarithm. All right, so let's take a look. I'm hoping the ln and e's are ringing some bells because ln is log base e, and we have e to the ln x here. All right, minus ln of x minus four equaling ln of five. Now you're more than welcome to write these as log base e's, but I, I want you to see what's happening in this first expression. When the base of your logarithm and the base of your power are the same, the only thing that survives is that exponent. And another way of just thinking of that is when you see an ln and an e together like this, they cancel out. So here I have ln x minus ln of x minus four equaling ln five. I still have logarithms on both sides, but I need to simplify this to a single logarithm. Well, I can use the quotient property for logs. I can collapse this into ln of x over x minus four, and that should be equal to the natural log of five. So when you have a logarithmic equation and you have logs on both sides and they're the same base, then their arguments have to be the same also, and this simplifies a little bit. This just becomes x over x minus four has to equal five, right? I set the arguments equal to each other, and all of a sudden now we have a linear equation to solve. So I've got a proportion here, I'm gonna cross multiply, all right? Or you could multiply both sides by the LCD to get rid of the fraction, but I have five times x minus four is equal to x, so I'm looking at 5x minus 20 equals x. And then if I subtract my x, I'm going to get 4x on this side. I get 20 on the right side. So ultimately, it looks like I'm looking at x equaling 5 when I go to solve this out. So let me just put this over here. We've got x is equal to 5. Now before I check that off and say, that's it, that's my answer, just plug this back in and make sure it doesn't make any of the arguments in your original function zero or negative. So if I plug five in, that argument is gonna be positive, so great. If I plug five into this argument, five minus four, it's still positive, great. And this is a constant and it's positive. So this is a legit answer. So my one answer coming out of here is that x is equal to five, okay? So let's, before we move on to the apply problems, let me go ahead and try and summarize what we've talked about in examples one through nine. So in one through nine, we were either solving exponential equations or logarithmic equations. And there were basically two types of exponential equations. There were the type of the exponential equations where the bases were the same. If the bases of your power are the same, then the, the mechanics were to set the power, excuse me, set the exponents equal to each other. And we saw that in example one. All right, so that was our very first example where we had powers whose bases were the same, so we set the exponents equal to each other. Now we had plenty other examples where we had exponential equations, or I should say an exponential expression on one side of the equation and a number on the other. And we solved those by taking the logarithm of both sides of the equation. And we used that technique in examples two through five. All right, there were times when we had two, or we had a logarithmic e equation with logs on both sides, and we ultimately needed to set the arguments equal to each other. And we saw that in example seven, and just now in example nine. Okay. And then there were times when we had a logarithm on one side of the equation and a number on the other, and when that was the case, 
We solved this by changing your equation into the equivalent exponential form. And we saw that in example six and example eight. All right, so we've seen multiple examples of these types of problems. And again, like always, at the end, check that each of the proposed solutions is in the domain, especially with these logarithmic equations. Anytime your argument becomes zero or negative, you gotta kick those answers out of your possible solutions. All right, so with that, we're gonna move on to the applied problems, which is fancy speak for word problems, everybody's favorite. All right, I'll see you in a few, bye.